The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Even though laser light has some beautiful properties, one can easily ruin these properties by mishandling the laser light. One simple way of ruining these properties is by reflecting the laser light back into the laser. That's a no-no for a lot of laser applications. So in this demonstration, I'm going to illustrate what the problem is, reflecting laser light back into the laser. We're going to look at the effect on the laser spectrum as well as on laser intensity. So the setup is here. We have uh, our short laser here, our 22 centimeter laser with internal mirrors. And again, let me remind you of the setup. We have the light from the laser then being reflected by this mirror and this beam splitter into the scanning Fabry Pro interferometer to show the spectrum. And the spectrum then is displayed on the, on the oscilloscope uh, over there. There's the uh, two modes and the little fella uh, on the scope. Now, we're also going to monitor the laser intensity. Again, the laser light coming in here gets reflected by this mirror. This time passes through this beam splitter, then reflected by the mirror here into a detector. And the output of this detector can be also displayed on the scope. And then I'll push the button for the other channel. And there it is. It's a... Uh, uh, it's a sort of constant output, but let me block the laser beam to show where zero is. So zero is about there, and, and here is the, the output of the detector. So if I block the light again, here's the zero of the detector, and here is the output then of the laser. So this way we can monitor both the spectrum and also the laser intensity. So let me go back to the, to the spectrum. So here we have the spectrum on the displayed on the on the scope. So now I'm ready to reflect some laser light back into the laser. See what happens. The way I'm going to do it is as follows. I have a beam splitter over here to sample the light, the laser light. Say 50% of it actually gets uh, reflected over here, and then this mirror. I have a mirror here to reflect the light back into, into the laser again uh, via this beam splitter. And if I block this, then I have no reflected light into the laser. If I take this card away, then I have light reflected into the laser. Okay, so now let's bring in the spectrum on the scope. So here's the laser spectrum. And you can see we have, uh, let's say, three modes or so. And, and they're reasonably stable. So now what I'm going to do is take this card away and reflect some light into, into the laser. And as you can see, the modes start to jump around and sometimes others appear and what have you. And I'm also going to play with this mirror a little bit here to see whether I can even enhance it. All right, so you can see that a mess makes a mess with the, with the, with the laser modes. Now again, just to make sure that this, is, this effect is coming from reflection. I block it again, and you see it's nice and quiet, and the modes are stable. If I take it away, then the frequencies are, are jumping, jumping around. So if you have an experiment that depends a lot on the spectrum of the laser, then you can have troubles if there's light reflected back into, into the cavity. All right, let me block it again. And now I'm going to switch to the laser intensity. So I'm going to go to laser intensity, and let me again check where zero is. So I see zero again on the scope. Then here is the output of the laser. And as you can see, it's nice and, and quiet. So now what I'm going to do is then remove this card so that we reflect some light back into the laser. So here we are, we remove the card, and we see that, and I have to pick up the 
the alignment, we can see that now we see some, some fluctuations in the, in the laser intensity up to about maybe 15, 20 percent or so uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the intensity. So now if I block it again, see it's nice and quiet, and if I unblock it, you can see I get about this 15 percent or, or more uh, intensity fluctuations. Again, let me remind you that zero, again zero is over here. Right? So there's the, the output without reflection, and again here is the output uh, with, uh, with reflection. All right, now, in order to dramatize this effect even more, I'm going to select only one frequency from the laser by using a polarizer. As we know, this, this laser puts out at least two, two modes, uh, and the, each one uh, is polarized orthogonal to the other. So by placing a polarizer over here, I can select only one frequency from the laser. So let me adjust the polarizer, and here we are on the scope. We have one frequency. Now what I'm going to do is take this card away to reflect some light back into the laser. So here we are, light is reflected, and, and you can see that the frequency starts to jump around, and also I get some other, another frequency also appearing. We can see this violent jumping around of, the, of, the, uh, of, this, uh, of this frequency. Okay. Now let me block it again and show you it's nice and quiet and then take it away and you can see that that it can uh, can jump 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 around all right now let's look at then the intensity when the laser is operating a single frequency so what I'll do now is go to the detector and uh, increase my intensity a little bit because the polarizer attenuates let me check zero so we can see zero is about here. Let me increase the intensity some more. Let's check zero again. And uh, wait a minute, let me set the zero. We had it, well, we had it uh, before over here. So we can have a direct comparison. Now let's look at the intensity again. So here we are, about two big divisions. This is when there's no reflection back into into the laser. Now, let me take the card away and pick up the, uh, the reflection. You can see now that, that we get about 30 or 40 percent fluctuation, sometimes even more when the laser it, it is at single frequency. Here we are. Look, look how noisy the laser output is when there is uh, reflection back in the layer. Here we are, look at that. Looks pretty awful. Now if I block it, it's nice and quiet. Take it away, and let the reflection go in, and you can get all kinds of fluctuations in the, in the laser intensity. So then in, in, in summary, one of the no-no's then with lasers is reflecting its laser light back into, into the laser. Now, some experiments, you can get away without reflecting the laser light back into the laser. But in some other experiments, it's, uh, it, you have to reflect light back into the laser because of the alignment of components. In that case, you would, use, you would have to use a, an isolator. Otherwise, you've got frequency fluctuations as well as intensity fluctuations. The thing that I have not told you is why, when you reflect laser light back into the laser, why does it have such dramatic effect on the, on the laser frequency as well as on the, on the intensity? So again, just like before, I'm going to leave you with this puzzle now to figure this one out for yourself.